Finally, we reach the last chapter of the main game. Following the path of the Destined One, the game makes us feel like we're retracing Sun Wukong's journey to the West, while weaving a story about all the things that stop us from finding true freedom and enlightenment. Greed, anger, delusion, romance, and emotional attachment. Black Myth Wukong is more than just a retelling of a myth. It's a profound exploration of imperfection. Despite the immense power one might have, there's always the burden of unresolved desires and unchecked emotions. These human flaws echo in our own journey through the game, leading to the final confrontation with forces that symbolize the chaotic control and manipulation of the world. Let's wrap it all up in this final chapter as we dive deep into the imperfect aspects of Sun Wukong's past, the world's treacherous control, and the still very long road to enlightenment resonating with the chapter's name, Unfinished. After the Destined One successfully retrieves five of the six relics, he is joined by Jubajie as they arrive at Mount Waguo, Sun Wukong's homeland. This place now holds the stone egg, the shell of Wukong's former body, left behind after he was shattered into six relics, or Ayatana. Zhu Bajie and the Destined One believe that merging the relics with the Stone Egg will restore Sun Wukong in his full form, allowing the Great Sage to return with his power and essence fully intact. They are abruptly challenged by Wang Lingguan, the Supreme Inspector and right-hand man of the Jade Emperor. Accompanied by the Celestial Army, Wang Lingguan stands as the enforcer of Heaven's Will. His presence is especially significant for Zhu Bajie, as it was Wang Lingguan who wrongfully condemned him, leading to his banishment from heaven, a past wound that resurfaces in this tense moment. The Celestial Army soldiers that stand alongside Wang Lingguan are not mere warriors. Their origins are tragic. These soldiers were once souls who sought to escape the underworld, but instead of finding peace, were tricked into eternal contracts that stripped them of the chance for reincarnation. Forced into the Eight Trigrams Furnace in the Tushita Palace, their souls were melted and fused into armor, transforming them into eternal soldiers of heaven. Even death in battle does not free them. If they fall, they are resurrected and forced to endure the torturous process all over again. It's hard to say which fate is more tragic, eternal punishment in the underworld or eternal servitude in heaven's army. As revealed in previous chapters, the Celestial Court has orchestrated the entire scheme to prevent Sun Wukong's resurrection. Fearing his power and the potential threat he poses to their rule, they have worked tirelessly to keep him sealed and broken. Wang Lingguan, following the court's orders, now stands as the final obstacle, determined to stop the Destined One and Zhu Bajie from bringing Sun Wukong back. After defeating Wang Lingguan, the presence of Sun Wukong's relics within the Destined One awakened a response from the renowned Somersault Cloud, which appeared and lifted him high into the sky. I can hardly describe my excitement at finally being able to use this incredible skill. Now, the Destined One can freely explore Mount Wago from the air. As we journey through the skies, we encounter some bosses who have ties to Sun Wukong's old acquaintances. The first is the Jiao Long of Waves. Originally a human, he was saved by a Jiaolong deity, the Jiao Moang, a scaled dragon demon king, and one of the seven great sages, sworn brothers of Sun Wukong. We catch a glimpse of him in a cutscene when traveling through Wukong's memories alongside the other sages. Next is the giant Shigandan. You may recall the Shigandan from Chapter 2, whose mind was corrupted by the Buddha heads attached to his back. This one suffered a similar fate. After the birth of Sun Wukong from the Celestial Stone, the remaining stone continued to absorb the essence of the sun and moon for a thousand years. Through self-cultivation, it eventually transformed into a Yao Guai, as large as a mountain. Not long after, someone planted a fleshy Buddha head on it, corrupting the stone's spirit. Weary, the stone spirit burrowed deep into the earth, absorbing the pure essence of the ground to replenish itself. But as it did, it drained the surrounding mountains of their will. Alas, this celestial stone, nurtured by the universe, ended up as a mere vessel for the parasitic Buddha head. Perhaps this is what we call fate, just as Sun Wukong became a Buddha only to be controlled by the Buddhist realm. 
After defeating the giant Shigandan, the Destined One encounters the Mandrill Chief, known as Tongbi Gibbon in the original novel, one of the four celestial primates. After Wukong was born from a stone, it was she who brought him into the forest and introduced him to the other monkeys, which eventually led to his rise as the Monkey King. When Wukong began to worry about life and death, the Mandrill Chief was the one who advised him to seek for immortality. This advice led Wukong to embark on his journey, where he studied under his first master, Patriarch Bodhi, who taught him the 72 earthly transformations and the famous somersault cloud skill. After Wukong abandoned his Buddhahood and was killed, transforming back into stone, the Mandrill Chief had a prophetic dream. An immortal appeared to her, telling her that if she could visit all the sacred places and temples in the world, gather the essence of the five skandhas, and craft the five skandhas pill, she might be able to awaken the stone and restore Wukong's divine spirit. This mysterious immortal could very well be Patriarch Bodhi himself, as he had already aided the Destined One by sending the Keeper of Black Wind Mountain to assist him earlier in his journey. This explains why we see the Mandrill Chief traveling across different locations in each chapter, subtly guiding the Destined One toward the retrieval of the Skandas. Sun Wukong was never lacking in cunning. Before his death, he secretly transformed his sacred belongings into formidable Yaoguais, all part of a plan for his eventual resurrection. The first is the Gold Armored Rhino, which was transformed from Wukong's armor, the Gold Suozi Armor. This Yao Guai mirrors the great sage's mighty iron body. Wukong was tempered in the eight trigrams furnace, pinned beneath a mountain for 500 years, injured by the Samadhi wind at Yellow Wind Ridge, trapped in the transforming gourd of the gold and silver horn brothers, scorched unconscious by the Samadhi fire, beheaded in the kingdom of Chechi, stung on the head by the scorpion Guai, imprisoned within the golden symbol in the New West, captured in the Golden Light Trap at the Temple of Yellow Flowers and endured the tightening headband curse numerous times. Despite enduring immense physical pain and mental torment, only he could guide the rest of his companions to the foot of Mount Lingshan. The gold-armored rhino reflects Wukong's indomitable spirit, never yielding to defeat. Even if its horn was shattered, it never lost the resolve to charge into battle, standing resolute and ready to fight anew. Sun Wukong, with his inherent wisdom, mastered human manners and speech during his travels across realms, ultimately achieving mastery of the Tao at Mount Lingtai under Patriarch Bodhi. While his natural strength was undeniable, his greatest growth stemmed not from physical prowess, but from his relentless pursuit of enlightenment. In his later years, Wukong formed brotherly bonds with Yao Guais, bantered with Bodhisattvas, and exchanged jokes with immortals. His charm and wisdom endeared him to all, making him a beloved figure who was always willing to offer advice and assistance. He understood the value of decorum and the importance of seeking wisdom from others, recognizing that true strength lay in knowledge and humility. Wukong could summon wind and rain and even seek the assistance of long kings. When faced with challenges or the need for reconnaissance, he often transformed into Yao Guais, relying less on brute strength and more on his ingenuity. In times of crisis, he sought guidance from higher beings, never allowing his pride to cloud his judgment. The Fengtail General, a cricket Yaoguai, followed a similar path. Its multiple eyes gave it a keen understanding of both its own capabilities and those of its enemies. Agile and quick-witted, it became a master of leaping and dodging, skillfully avoiding confrontations with stronger foes, much like Wukong. The cricket's cleverness mirrored Wukong's own, and it was no surprise that the crown, once worn by the Monkey King himself, fit perfectly with this nimble creature's sharp instincts. Together, they embodied the balance of wisdom, agility, and resourcefulness that defined Wukong's journey. When Sun Wukong studied at Mount Lingtai under the guidance of Patriarch Bodhi, he not only mastered the 72 transformations, but also learned the renowned somersault cloud technique. Even with his newfound skills, the Patriarch warned that Wukong's impatience and inclination to show off would inevitably lead him astray. Immortals often say that Sun Wukong was at his most mischievous and rebellious during his reign as the Monkey King. However, 
Despite his defiance toward the celestial court, he seldom inflicted harm on other beings during that time. It was only after becoming a disciple of Tang Sanzong that Wukong unleashed more destructive methods. Theft, kidnapping, arson, and the destruction of mountains and caves all became second nature to him, as if a tempest were contained within his immortal frame. The cloud-treading deer, born from Wukong's lotus silk cloud-treaders, embodies both his free-spirited nature and his darker inclinations. The deer moves with grace and speed, just as Wukong once did across the clouds. Yet beneath this grace lies a fierceness, a restless desire to outdo others. When the deer falters, its true nature is revealed. Envious and yearning to surpass all, it cannot maintain the carefree facade it projects. Much like Wukong's flawed nature, when unchecked, its competitive spirit ignites a tempest of aggression and unyielding will. Tang San Zhang often advocated for kindness, while Sun Wukong was known for his fierce punishment of evil. While confronting the yellow-robed demon, the Yao Guai kidnapped a princess from the kingdom of Bao Xiang. Despite her suffering and reluctance to leave due to her feelings for the Yao Guai and the children she had borne with him, Sun Wukong ordered Beiji to throw the Yao Guai's children from a great height, reducing them to mere lumps of flesh. At Old Yang's house, after learning of the unfilial deeds of the old couple's son and seeing how they indulged him for the sake of incense offerings, Wukong proceeded to behead the son despite Old Yang's pleas. Sun Wukong's nature was to show no mercy to villains and evildoers. He delighted in eradicating evils and Yao Guais. The numerous blood debts incurred during the Kant's journey to the West, though each had its reasons, were mostly attributed to him. The mantis was actually transformed from the great sage's gauntlet. It seems the gauntlet inherited the great sage's ruthlessness. Whether this aspect of Sun Wukong should be viewed as imperfect or not is solely based on different perspectives, for even the Buddhist realm has the iron fist of Dharmapala, who punishes wrongdoers. The path to enlightenment or justice can sometimes require extreme measures. With all the armor pieces retrieved, the destined one ventured into the Water Curtain Cave, where the great sages Rui Jingu Bang lay in wait. Why had it not been moved away by celestial forces? Simply because no one but the great sage himself could lift it. Sun Wukong originally acquired it from the palace of Ao Guang, the Dragon King of the East Sea. The staff was once a pillar used by Yu the Great to measure the depths of the world flood in times immemorial, weighing 13,500 jin. It obeyed Sun Wukong's will, growing or shrinking as he desired. Just as the monkey is fated to wield it, the staff remains a part of his destiny. The Destined One finally embodied the majestic form of the Great Sage, venturing to the peak of Mount Wagu, where the stone egg lies crushing all the futile resistance of the celestial forces. Inside the stone egg, the old monkey awaited, guiding them through the river of Wukong's memories, revealing his past and the deep lingering obsessions tied to the six relics. In short, this river contains Wukong's memories of deep regret, remorse, attachment, and lingering repentance, and the old monkey symbolizes the Buddhist side of Wukong. He guides the destined one to help him understand the suffering brought by mortal desires without having to experience or be burdened by those lingering obsessions like Wukong was. I made a video explaining what the relics are and why they have specific symbols in the game to keep this video from getting too long. For example, why the craving eye relic is symbolized by the Chongming bird and why the grieved body is represented by the big feng along with the events from Wukong's past that the old monkey referred to. And the identities of the seven great sages, sworn brothers of Wukong, are revealed due to their relevance to the fifth relic, the grieved body. In this video, we'll just focus on the sixth relic, the final sense. The final relic is the desired mind in the original novel, but in the game, it is called free mind, representing Sun Wukong's ultimate desire to completely free himself from the control of the celestial court and the Buddhist realm. The sixth relic, Desired Mind, is symbolized by the headband, serving as a metaphor that a person's will, consciousness, and memory are bound to that individual. 
It drives their actions, shapes their purposes, and defines how they interact with the world. The mind is at the forefront of the six senses. It is the unique essence of each being, and it vanishes upon death. Even if someone is resurrected, they would merely be a mindless shell without their past memories. This concept is mentioned several times in the game, such as when the Father of Stone seeks Princess Iron Fan to revive his deceased friend. The princess refuses, explaining that even if she were resurrected, she would only be a mindless shell without her former memories. Sun Wukong is truly gone, but because he erased his name from the Book of Death, he cannot die by normal means or be reincarnated. His former broken shell in the Stone Egg is now a mindless vessel without memory. Only his five senses and powers remain, represented by five relics, waiting for the destined one to inherit them and decide whether to follow the free path of the Great Sage, equal to heaven, or the devout path of the victorious fighting Buddha. In the game, Sun Wukong is gone, and the things in this place, his lingering obsessions, are preventing him from achieving salvation. His greed for his belongings, his anger, arrogance, romantic feelings, and regrets about his brothers all bind him. Most importantly, there is the feeling of being controlled and surveilled by the very Buddhist forces of which he is a part. This is represented by the four giant statues guarding his former shell. These statues, Arhats and Dharmapalas, the wrathful gods and protectors of the Buddhist realm, are the same figures who once helped Wukong subdue the bull demon king. Now, they watch over Wukong as though he were just another Yao Guai who must be kept in check. In this place, Sun Wukong is depicted as full of flaws and imperfections, still consumed by mortal desires and lingering obsessions. Meanwhile, the destined one learns from Wukong's past mistakes and imperfections without personally experiencing those six desires. Thus, the destined one harbors none of Wukong's lingering obsessions. It is akin to understanding others' mistakes beforehand without needing to experience them making the Destined One wiser, more enlightened, and more free-minded than Sun Wukong himself. Now we come to one of Black Myth Wukong's greatest mysteries. Who is the Destined One and who holds Wukong's final relic? The answer lies within the Buddhist concept of Mind Monkey Will Horse, which symbolizes the restless, unpredictable nature of the mind and how it drives an individual's actions and willpower. The mind is the most crucial sense, governing memory, consciousness, and cognition. If the mind inherits different memories, it leads to different wills and actions. The sixth relic in the game, the freed mind, encapsulates this metaphor. In the original novel, heavily influenced by Buddhist philosophy, Wu Chengen deeply explored the concept of mind monkey will horse through Sun Wukong's character. Sun Wukong held the position of Bimawen, responsible for tending to the heavenly horses, and this role symbolized his duty to govern both the horses and his own mind. His journey with the white dragon horse and Tang San Zhang to the west also reflects this symbolic relationship. The metaphor of Wukong caring for the horses, such as waking them for grazing or managing them at night, illustrates the restless, wandering nature of the mind. Wukong's path to enlightenment is also a journey of mastering and controlling the mind. Early in the story, Wukong experiences a sudden realization about the impermanence of life, which leads him to leave Mount Huago and seek immortality from the Tao. Wukong's name, meaning Awaken to Emptiness, represents the enlightened mind that must forsake mortal desires to escape samsara, the cycle of suffering, through diligent practice. However, this is also a restless and unrestrained mind, represented by Wukong's ever-active nature. The mind monkey, will horse, illustrates the relationship between mind and will, where the mind controls the will and leads to actions. Every being, including the destined one, has their own set of six senses. As he embarks on his journey, the destined one not only hans his own abilities, but also inherits Wukong's five relics, representing Wukong's five empowered senses, which grant him immense power. Like other senses, the mind acts as a bridge that connects a being to the world. It transcends memories and cognition, which shape the will of an individual. However, the mind is unlike the other senses. It is the essence of an individual, and once Wukong perished, his mind was no longer fully intact. The mind relic, therefore, is not literally Wukong's mind, but rather the destined one's own mind, now enriched by Wukong's memories and will. 
The proof that Wukong's memory merges with the Destined One's mind is when the mirror images of the old monkey, Zhu Bajie, and the Destined One appear in Wukong's memory river. Wukong's memories stop at the point where he becomes a mindless shell, watched over by Buddhist forces, including Arhats and Dharmapalas. When the Destined One retrieves Wukong's memories from two crucial sources, the memory river and the one held by Erlang Shen, his own mind merges with Wukong's. It is as if two minds coexist in one body. This merger transforms not only the Destined One's power, but also his perspective and actions, leaving him free to choose his path. This is reflected in the game's two endings. If the Destined One inherits memories from the River of Memory through the Old Monkey, who symbolizes the Buddhist side of Wukong, he guides the Destined One to help him understand the suffering brought by mortal desires without having to experience or be burdened by those lingering obsessions like Wukong was. He receives Wukong's memories of deep regret, remorse, attachment, and lingering repentance. This side of Wukong resonates with Buddhist teachings on enlightenment through self-reflection on suffering, repentance, and forsaking the desires that bring suffering. Escaping the samsara cycle of life and death and pursuing freedom of mind leads to the default ending, where the destined one receives the headband again, representing diligent practice, suspending all mortal desires, and continuing the path of a devout Buddhist. However, if the Destined One inherits Wukong's memories from Erlang Shen as well, he receives Wukong's memories of rebellion and defiance, showcasing Wukong's rebellious nature, his single-minded pursuit of freedom, and his desire to resist all forms of control. In these memories, Wukong accuses the Buddha of having ties to the Yao Guai, golden-winged Great Peng, a connection that is revealed in the game's ending short films. He also discovers that some Yao Guai knew him before, referring to Kui Mulang, one of the 28 constellations who became the yellow robe demon in the original novel. Finally, Wukong expresses his desire to remove the headband even after attaining Buddhahood. This side of Wukong embodies his inner drive to break free from authority, standing tall as the unbound great sage. This leads to the true ending, where the destined one, now possessing all of Sun Wukong's memories, power, and will, is ultimately liberated from the headband. Now, as a worthy successor with all that power, memory, and will from Sun Wukong himself, what will the Destined One choose to do next? This decision is left to you, the player, the Destined One. To further prove that the Destined One houses two minds in one body, this duality of the mind draws on deep philosophical traditions, including Buddhist thought, the Great Perfection of Wisdom Treatise, and the well-known Western paradox of identity, the ship of Theseus. Both of these sources help illustrate the transformation that the destined one undergoes as he inherits Sun Wukong's memories, power, and will. In New Game Plus 4, after unlocking the full abilities of the relics and performing the Wukong stance skill, we can hear the destined one speak with Sun Wukong's voice, uttering phrases like, from this day, my name will be Sun Wukong. Bajie, upon witnessing this, remarks, I knew that you, monkey, haven't died. This demonstrates the intertwined cognition within the Destined One's mind. It becomes clear that this blurred coexistence of Wukong's mind within the Destined One has advanced. The longer the two minds share one body, the more intertwined they become, leading to a fusion of identity. Wukong's more aggressive and primal instincts, which symbolize his rebellion and defiance, begin to dominate much like how mortal desires can easily overcome the neutrality of a Buddhist's path. This resonates with the ancient Buddhist text, The Great Perfection of Wisdom Treatise, which contains a philosophical puzzle. The story involves a traveler who encounters two demons. One removes all of the traveler's body parts, and the other replaces them with those from a corpse. The traveler then questions whether he is still himself or has become the corpse. An equivalent of this in Western philosophy is the Ship of Theseus paradox, which explores whether an object remains the same if all of its parts are replaced. The ship still retains its name, naval history, and legacy, but whether it is the same ship as the original is a matter of perspective. Similarly, with the Destined One, the question arises, is he Sun Wukong resurrected, or merely a worthy successor who bears Wukong's mind, memories, and will? Is he a Sun Wukong in a new shell, 
or simply a monkey who bears Wukong's mind. I prefer to think of him as a new successor who carries Wukong's mind, thus embodying two minds in one body. This interpretation resonates strongly with the fight against the Sage Broken Shell, which parallels the internal battle between two sides of Sun Wukong on his journey to enlightenment in the original novel. One side seeks freedom by rebelling against authority, while the other finds freedom within the mind by forsaking all desires, following the path of Buddhahood. This concept mirrors a similar event in Journey to the West, where the six-eared macaque disguises himself as Sun Wukong, sharing the same appearance and skills. The six-eared macaque represents Wukong's darker, more selfish side, his greed and hunger for power. After defeating the six-eared macaque, Wukong becomes more serene and calm, adopting peaceful actions, which symbolizes his triumph over his darker nature and his readiness to attain Buddhahood. When the Destined One defeats the Sage's Broken Shell, it represents overcoming the flaws and incomplete version of Sun Wukong. As a result, the Destined One inherits only Wukong's virtuous qualities, becoming a truly enlightened successor. No matter which path the Destined One chooses, his journey is still far from over. If he seeks freedom by rebelling against authority once again, he faces the challenge of confronting the entire celestial court. Alternatively, if he continues on the Buddhist path toward enlightenment and immortality, he may find himself trapped in a cycle of disappointment, feeling constantly surveilled or controlled. The dark side of the ruling system, present across the three realms, shows that even those in high power are not free from corruption. Despite immense power, one is still burdened by unresolved desires and unchecked emotions. Dare to ask, where is the road? It lies beneath your feet. The destined one's journey toward freedom and enlightenment remains unpredictable, resonating deeply with the chapter title, Unfinished. In the ending short film, we retrace the journey to the West, but in reverse order, mirroring the Destined One's journey as he relives Sun Wukong's memories. It begins with the scene at Thunderclap Temple on Mount Lingshan, where the pilgrims finally reach their destination and attain Buddhahood. However, on their journey home, they forget the promise they made to the 1300-year-old turtle who helped them cross the heaven-reaching river. The turtle had asked them to inquire of the Buddha how much longer he had to practice before attaining human form. Upset that they failed to fulfill this request, the turtle throws them off his back into the river. Next, we see an event highlighting the Jade Emperor's childish and selfish nature. When the Marquis of Fengxian County, in a fit of rage over his son's misdeeds, flips the altar offering meant for the Jade Emperor, the Jade Emperor retaliates. He punishes the entire county with a drought, imposing unreasonable conditions. The rooster must finish pecking through a mountain of rice, the dog must finish licking a mountain of flour, and the candle flame must burn through the giant lock's shank before he will allow rain to fall on Fengxian County. Next, we see an event in the Kingdom of Bixu, where the king, under a lustful spell cast by a vixen fox Yaoguai, became gravely ill. Upon hearing from the dear Yaoguai Taoist that an elixir made from the hearts of 1,111 children could cure him, the king ordered all those children to be caged and prepared for sacrifice. We then glimpse Tai Shang Lao Jun and his eight trigram furnace, the very furnace used to punish Wukong, forged the celestial army, and produced the Samadhi fire that created the flaming mountains. After this, we encounter the golden-winged great Peng, a Yaoguai king in Shituo Ridge, who has a mysterious connection to the Buddha. Next is the red-scaled giant Python, a Yaoguai who once swallowed Sun Wukong. She sustains her youth and power by drinking human blood. Following that is the nine-headed insect, the Dragon King's son-in-law, who is eventually slain by Wukong and Zhu Jie, with the help of Erlang Shen and the six brothers of Meishan. Then we meet the six-eared macaque, a demon capable of transforming into Sun Wukong's likeness and possessing the same skills. He is ultimately subdued by the Buddha's giant golden alms bowl. Next, we encounter the single-horned rhinoceros king. He is actually Tai Shang Lao Jun's azure bull, who stole his master's golden jade ring and escaped to the mortal realm. The Yao Guai used the ring to suck away Sun Wukong's Rui Jingu Bang. Wukong sought help from various celestial forces, including Li Jing, Neja, 
and the fire and water deities, but all of their weapons were sucked away by the ring as well. We then revisit the incident in the kingdom of Chechi, where Wukong and his fellow disciples transformed into the three pure ones and tricked the three Taoists of the kingdom into drinking his urine. These Taoists were actually Yaoguais. Enraged, they challenged the pilgrims to a duel in magical skills, including summoning wind and rain, guessing hidden objects, and a beheading challenge. Wukong, of course, passed the challenges unharmed. The tiger Yaoguai, however, was killed during the beheading challenge, and his head was taken away by a dog Wukong had created through trickery. Next is the scene where Zhu Ba Jie revives Wukong after he is burned by the Samadhi fire of Red Boy. We then see the lingering romance of Wukong's past with the White Bone Lady. Next is the scene involving Zhenyuan Daxian's ginseng tree. After stealing the ginseng fruits and being insulted by Zhenyuan Daxian's disciples, Wukong, in a fit of anger, strikes down the tree, leading Zhenyuan Daxian to hold Tang Sanzang as a hostage. Eventually, Wukong seeks Guanyin's help to revive the tree and make amends for his rash actions. We then witness Wukong and Zhu Ba Jie encountering Xiao Wu Jing, who is now a Yao Guai residing at the Lusha River. Formerly a naval general in the celestial realm, Xiao Jing was banished to the mortal realm after accidentally breaking a valuable vase that belonged to the Jade Emperor. Next, we see the iconic moment when Tang Sanzang rescues Wukong from beneath the Five Element Mountain, where he had been imprisoned for 500 years by Buddha's hand. Following this, the film revisits the famous bet between Buddha and Sun Wukong. The proud Monkey King wagers that he can escape from Buddha's palm, soaring on his somersault cloud until he reaches what he believes to be the edge of the universe, marked by five towering pillars. To prove his feat, Wukong scribbles a note on one of the pillars and urinates on it. However, when he returns to Buddha's palm, Buddha reveals that the pillars were his own fingers. The next sequence is a vivid recollection of Wukong's chaotic battles in heaven. He fights valiantly against the celestial army, including formidable warriors like Neja, Erlang Shen, and Li Jing, the Heavenly King. Despite their combined might, Wukong proves almost invincible as he defies the celestial court. Finally, the film shows the scene of Sun Wukong among the Seven Sages, celebrating with wine before their infamous rebellion against heaven. The short film concludes as we return to the moment when the game begins. Wukong, having forsaken Buddhahood, stands tall with his plan etched in his mind. He is ready to confront the celestial court once again, setting off on a new journey filled with challenges, battles, and revelations. This ending beautifully ties together Wukong's past and the beginning of the game, showcasing his indomitable spirit and never-ending quest for true freedom.